Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to dive into the review of the XP Pen Artist Pro 19, the second generation. I spent a lot of time testing this tablet, measuring the heat, the pressure sensitivity, even trying to scratch it. And I also drawn a lot with this device since I received it. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm a French comic artist and I'm a big advocate of the free, libre and open source software. And I only use that for my daily work. But don't worry if you are using Windows or Mac because this review will be only about the hardware. I'll be sharing all the GNU Linux post installation tips in a dedicated blog post that I'll be updating. Uh, it will be way easier than updating a video. So be sure to check it out. The link will be in the description. Now, just to keep things transparent, I would like to mention that this video is not sponsored. XPPen sent me this unit free of charge and only asked me to write this review and a blog post. All opinions expressed here are my own and I'm free to say whatever I want, but I also want to let you know about a possible bias. I've been using the XP Pen 16 Pro, uh, so the little sister of this model, the 16 inch, as my daily driver for more than a year now. So I'm definitely at home with this product and it's almost the same. So let's move to the unboxing and we have a fully printed box. And inside we have the unit that is in a synthetic fabric. Uh, it looks really nice. We have a piece of paper with some calibration information and then the cable. So the two in one big cable with some HDMI and USB on one side and a USB-C on the other side. We have also two braided cable USB-C to USB-C. They look really high quality. And we also have the case of the styluses. Uh, the thin and the thick one. We have the remote with the shortcut buttons. It's uh, named the 8CK05 with a USB-C to USB cable. And then the power supply unit with uh, adapters for various regions of the world. Mine will be the European one, this one, so I clip it. And you can see a USB-C plug on the other side. And finally, a little box with a warranty, quick guide, and oh, extra nibs. That's a good surprise. And uh, a piece of fabrics to wipe the screen and also a glove. And to give you an idea about the size, I compare it here with a piece of paper. It's an A4 format and also some object that might be familiar to you. Uh, I also compare it with the 16 Artist Pro Gen 2 and with a Wacom Intuos Pro Large. And it's about the same size. The case of this tablet is very thin and you have on the top of the device two USB-C ports, a button for the brightness with minus and plus and a power button with its LED. And the case is slightly thinner on the bottom of the device. On the rear, you have something to mount a Visa 75 by 75, the fit of the device, and also a little grid on the top and on the bottom for the heat dissipation. The overlay surface is very interesting because it has a strong anti-glare effect. As you can see on the picture, it's really hard to get a reflection of something. But on the good side, you can't really catch fingerprints with this device, but it catch also, and that's the downside, all the surrounding light. So if you have a lamp on your desk, it will also catch that. After that, I decided to sacrifice a little corner of my device to test the robustness of the overlay surface. So I tried to scratch it with various metallic objects. And as you can probably hear, I'm not faking it. Fortunately for me, the hardness of the overlay surface is way higher than metal. And it was easy to remove the scratches because, after all, it was only metal powder left on the surface. 
Once connected, I was really pleased with the resolution. The maximum is a 4K one and also with all the compatible resolution. There is a long list, but the Quaid HD and the 1080p is really pleasing when you have to clone the display or use it with other display or doing some video work. And just as a note, uh, this is not a really true a 19 inch display, it's more like a 18 inch display. And to be exact, I measured 18.4 at the size of the real active surface. I really appreciate that you don't need a specific driver to access to a calibration menu on the display. You just have to hold the plus and power button and release them and then you have this menu with many options. So the ergonomic to change option is not probably the best to do some thin tuning, but you can still do it. I also like the shortcut to decrease or increase the brightness. And all in all, the colors are great on this device. Uh, you have a color volume a bit near to Adobe RGB, way larger than sRGB for sure. And all in all, I didn't met any problem into color profiling the device with a colorimeter. I then decided to measure the heat of the device and for that I made a document, a table, with a 10 by 10 grid and measured 100 times the temperature in Celsius. After that I could color all the table and so you can have a sort of heat map where it's hot and where it's not. And as you can see the maximum isn't bad. Uh, we have a 35.2 degrees Celsius and uh, the minimal is really cool. So we can say this device is doing a good job at heat dissipation, but I would still advise to reduce the brightness to 75, so it's even less hot. I then decided to test the jitters, and for that I have my little method with a ruler, and I usually uh, try to find them in the corner. So that's why you see me tracing lines like this. And I wasn't disappointed because I could quickly find in the four corner four spot. But uh, fortunately nothing in the center. So your drawing area is safe and this place is where there is icon. So your precision is safe. Then I move it on to the pressure sensitivity measurement and for that I'm using a kitchen scale. It's one I modified with a tiny hole on the side and I can put my stylus on it and the proximity with the device is still low enough for counting the pressure. So this way I can press and get a report in gram and at the same time a pressure from the device. All I have to do after that is to report all this data on a table and generate a graph with it. And the graph is pretty linear and the maximum pressure sensitivity is 600 gram. It's still a little bit too much for my taste, but it's something you can fix at a software level on the driver. You can connect the device with a single USB-C on the top. Uh, and that thanks to a hub that is midway uh, in the 2 and one cable where you can plug the USB-C that goes to the power supply. Uh, you can also use directly a USB-C to the power supply and connect two USB-C on your device. Unfortunately, I find the design of the cable a little bit big and ugly going like that outside of the device. And before starting to draw, I would like to show you the styluses. So the thick one and the thin one. And the thin one is very interesting because uh, they made some innovation here. You can remove the two buttons and replace it with a plastic cache. And this one makes uh, your stylus like uh, a pencil without button on the side. Uh, this is very interesting. Unfortunately, the thick stylus comes with a scroll wheel and I find this innovation questionable. Also, you can't flip the stylus to erase with these styluses because they don't have an eraser tip. Drawing and painting with this device is a real pleasure because there is almost no parallax. You have a very quick responsive brush that can do cross hatching, a long line, and of course you can go to precision with the 4K resolution screen. So it's good for the line art. The texture of the screen is a bit uh, slippery. So what I like to do is to send the tip of my styluses so there is a little bit more grip. The pressure sensitivity is great for the two styluses 
and the tilt of the device is also very smooth and very responsive. But there is one thing I don't like and that's the scroll wheel on the thick stylus. It's really sensitive and it's right where I usually put my fingers. It's probably not a feature for artists like me. I had to turn it off to use this stylus, but then the two buttons are still difficult to reach because they are positioned higher up on the pen. That's why I would recommend to anyone who wants to purchase this type of tablet to also consider putting on their basket uh, an extra pen because on the shop of XP Pen you can find the classic pen, the one with an eraser and I got mine with the previous tablet, the 16 Pro and I really prefer this stylus if you, if you still prefer the thick classic stylus. About the ergonomic, you can use it flat with the keyboard in front of you, but I think the more classic uh, position is with the device on its feet, with the keyboard in front of you, or with the laptop on the side. Personally, I built this little stand in wood, and I just put the device on it so I can reach my keyboard on the top. XP Pen also sent me one of their new accessories, and it's a stand for their new tablet. It's easy to attach with the four screws on the Visa 75 by 75 and then you have a simple handle on the top to adjust the inclination of your workspace. Really well made, I recommend it. I also really like the fact that I can easily clone my main display on this tablet and use it like a display tablet or a classic tablet at the same time. I'm not really speaking about the remote control, the ATCK05, because it's a normal keypad with a dial button. And also I made a full blog post about it, so check it, the link will be in the description. In conclusion, I would like to come back on all the good things of this tablet and list them one by one. So in my first position, there is the fact that I can run this device with only free Libre and open source software. There is for sure tiny paper cut here and there, but you can read all of that on the blog post and I'm sure there will be an evolution to all of that. My second one on the list is the screen because it's a 4K screen, 60 by 9 ratio with also compatible resolution like Quaid HD or 1080p. Uh, this is really good. Also very high on my list are all the features that contribute to a good drawing experience, such as the pressure sensitivity, the responsiveness of the tilt, the low parallax, etc. etc. I also appreciate that the tablet comes with two styluses, and I particularly appreciate the innovation on the thin stylus, the fact that you can remove the two buttons and put a little cash to get a buttonless stylus. Then I was really surprised by the scratch test and how the overlay surface resisted to all the metallic objects. That was something. I also really like to have real buttons on the frame of the device to manage the brightness or to even access a menu with all the calibration options. Uh, this is really precious. Finally, I would like to leave a positive note about the heat dissipation. Even if the device gets warm on the top, it's not uncomfortable, and especially if you turn the brightness down to 75%. And now let's move to the negative critics of the tablet. So at first I have the stylus with a scroll wheel. I still don't know the usage of the scroll wheel. As I said, it's very sensitive. So right now it's a little bit hard coded to a control plus and a control minus and this will zoom the canvas and uh, my, my finger just get a lot into that. So each time I draw, I, I had a, a zoom in or zoom out. So that's why I had to, to deactivate it. So maybe it's a feature for people who bruise the web or maybe it's for 3D artists we need something like the brush size for sculpting or something, but it's definitely not my use case. Then I really dislike the top cable, the USB-C. Uh, I dislike the design and I dislike the fact that it is, it's large and also that there is an offset. Uh, it could be closer to the, to the case, but there is this uh, gap that make it bigger than it should be. 
Also, I would like to mention that the two styluses don't have eraser tip. And um, this is something that I don't use. I usually don't flip the stylus to erase. I prefer a shortcut on the keyboard. So it's not a big problem for me, but it might be for some user. And last, I would like to mention the anti-glare of the overlay surface. It's uh, something good and it's something also bad when it catches the light of the environment. And when it's a large tablet, it has tendencies to catch the light that are uh, nearby, so the lamp of your desk or the lamp uh, on your ceiling. You might have noticed that I'm not showing the price on this review and this is intentional. Uh, I know the price has a lot of variation, so whatever I put on this review will be outdated very soon. And that's why I prefer it to just put a link in the description to the product. Uh, there will be some promotional period and I'm thinking about one that is very soon, the Black Friday. So go check the link. Uh, if I have some promotional code, I will also put them in the description. All in all, it's a very high quality tablet and I will trade my 16 inch for this model on my daily production and if you ask me, do I recommend this tablet? Of course, it's a big yes. It's a high quality tablet and go for it if you can afford it. But if you want to compare it with another tablet, I also published the review of another 19 inch tablet, the Huion Canvas Pro 19. And uh, the release date is around the same date as this one. So I hope you liked the review. Thanks again for watching. Have a nice rest of your day. Bye.